Hi, I'm Jason Gorber from ThatShelf.com. We're here to talk about some of the joys and the frustrations of dealing with analog media, especially for any fans of vinyl. Big change. So I've been a collector of music for many, many years. As you can probably tell, I have a lot of records, a lot of CDs. I go back. Um, when I was a kid, um, obviously my first medium was um, vinyl records. And, and uh, you know, you inherit things from your parents. Uh, but when I bought them myself, what I would do is actually take the record out, make a tape of it, um, and then just play the tape. And I'd sort of keep the record, you know, sacrosanct. I didn't have a particularly great turntable. It was an okay one. I guess one of the, um, when I was really young, I had a really crappy, like, Fisher-Price one. But I got, you know, some sort of Sony thing with a built-in preamp, which was fine. Um... And then uh, years later, I ended up with like a duel and then um, uh, uh, a, c a couple others sort of on my way up. I think I had a Yamaha linear tracker, which was, you know, a very good player uh, for the time for me. It lasted me many years. I upgraded the cartridge and now I have much better systems. You'll see a lot more of that in uh, some coming videos. But nonetheless... Um, uh, I'm absolutely of the age where I saw all the issues with vinyl playback and I didn't see many of the benefits because I didn't really have a system to truly expose it. Um, I knew people that were sort of lunatic about vinyl, um, but I, as I said, only saw some of the issues. Um, I, I was a er relatively early adopter of Super Audio CD and DVD Audio, big fan of multi-channel recordings, but also um, the improvement over CD. Um, not only just in terms of the fundamental technology, it's not that 1644.1 is necessarily inherently evil the way that some people think it is. Um, certainly high resolution gives you something better, but ideally, like anything, like any of these new record pressings, them spending better <laughs> attention, more time on the mastering means that hypothetically, if it's a high-res digital or super audio CD, especially in the early days, it's something that was cared about, right? So they, they paid more attention. They did much less limiting, they meant much less compression. So it was a better reproduction of particularly an old analog recording done in DSD or MLP with DVD audio um, that hypothetically just gave you a much better reproduction. Um, uh, finally, when I got my, my new player, my, my micro Secchi, and sort of upgraded from there, uh, I sort of fell in the trap of this uh, vinyl. It's not even a renaissance. It's just this explosion of really incredible stuff where you're getting um, presses and releases, even of vintage stuff that's better than it's ever been before. Uh, our capacity to do incredible vinyl, uh, mirroring incredible vinyl technology with exquisite pressing with a bunch of companies that really genuinely care means we are absolutely not at a renaissance of vinyl, but sort of at the peak of what Vinyl reproduction can be. It's never been easier to spend, you know, a not insignificant, but let's just say somewhere around a thousand dollars to get a preposterously amazing turntable that will absolutely uncover some of the stuff that's sort of buried in some of these uh, tracks. Many, many people don't spend that much on a turntable, which is totally fine. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that's an issue, but it's certainly when you get at least that sort of um, level, that sort of uh, low high end, as it were. Um, you really are genuinely getting a lot out of what is actually pressed on these, you know, archaic things that were sort of developed, I guess the 1930s is when it was first developed. Um, but uh, coming out truly um, by the late 15s and through the 60s of the long playing record on vinyl. Um, look, we've, we've lived through the 1970s and all crises. Um, we've, we've had the uh, Japanese develop super vinyl as part of their CED nonsense. All kinds of stuff that brings us to the clarity vinyls, the super vinyls, the the one steps, the all the stuff that's going on. And so you genuinely have to jump up and down and celebrate the likes of the the tone poet stuff that's coming out, the music matter stuff that's coming out, the um, um, the <laughs> uh, the blue note um, uh, anniversary stuff. Um, uh, the, the classic uh, VMP stuff, which is um, pressed at um, QRP. Ba basically, I, I've mentioned this before, how insane it is that we know sort of on a name basis the, the, the vinyl um, mastering engineers now, the people who are actually making the plates, the Bernie Grunmans of this world, the Kevin Grays, um, that, that we, we who, those of us who collect are sort of knowing like, oh, this pressing is going to be a bit better. Well, look, the most nerdy of nerdy 
forums to actually discuss the stuff that is um, run by, or at least owned by Steve Hoffman, who many people follow with the DCC stuff and all the things that he's done. Again, um, making brand names out of other people uh, that previously sort of the only name I maybe knew of Robert Ludwig because it was just this name I kept seeing on the back of every record. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? So nonetheless, here we are left with some incredible releases being done by the likes of Kraft, Analog Productions, Mobile Fidelity, um, really, really amazing stuff. And when it comes to MoFi, um, I did a video recently on this bad boy. Super excited about it. Um, still crazy after all these years. Incredible Paul Simon record, 1975 record of the year. That one that sort of slipped in between the, um, the onslaught of all things Stevie Wonder. I did my video sort of showcasing how it fit in with all the other... Um, uh, uh, some of the Paul Simon recordings I had and I opened it up and I showed it to you and soon after the video again got a box you've all seen this before all comes nice very immaculate you know gold stamp foil very pristine with the one-step process showing how carefully they've sort of gone through all this and so you're buying this was 125 US dollars um, by the time I got this to Canada a fortune it's cost me sixty dollars to ship um and then the question is why didn't i buy locally i would desperately buy locally but so many of these are selling out now so immediately in the states that local retailers don't even get it i've had a bunch of them like the run dmc i had on pre-order for a year and a half two years never got one so here we are mofi i open it up i put it on i cannot wait to hear this and we got a problem so Here's the deal. We've shown this before, but um, with their incredible, amazing vinyl production, blah, 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 um, on their thing, this is sort of semi-transparent um, with the super vinyl. It'll be sort of hard to hear. I'll just put it up against the light here, see if you can sort of see my hand through here. Nonetheless, you have this, and, and I'll showcase this in a minute, but yeah, this is on disc one. And uh, you can't see it from here, but there's all kinds of surface marking, which usually isn't a problem. It's usually like, you know, there's some sort of schmutz on the top that's sort of there, discolors, especially on the semi-transparent, <laughs> um, translucent um, uh, album. You're, go you're going to get some of that. But when I flip over to side two, it's all here. And again, I will, I will highlight a photo. I'll just put up a photo that shows... It's, there's this gray cloudy stuff right on the surface and 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 if you're just to look at it if I just hold it up you're like you don't see much but right about here if I can get an angle but right about here you have this sort of cloudy especially inside too it's called non-fill um, and what it is is when they put the sort of if my own you know ignorance of this this is just all the stuff that I've learned because thanks to many people online that uh, try to teach people like me, um, you basically have this puck of rubber, right? So when you have the pressing, um, they put the pieces of paper on the top and bottom for the for the labels, which, as you recall, the MoFi uses their own labels uh, rather than reproducing an original. So they put the paper in, and they put this sort of puck, and then the press slams, and then you have, thanks to our friends on the one-step process that we're dealing directly from the positive, um, so you have the positive on the top and the bottom and it squishes down and then X amount of pressure and heat is applied and then after X amount of time it opens up and then the record has come. It gets put on a trimmer. The trimmer gets rid of all the excess stuff. You have this flat profile disc. Again, not warped. Totally looks fine. And it goes off. Non-fill is when, um, for whatever reason, the, um, the vinyl compound cools a little bit or whatever transpires, it doesn't flow completely. Imagine like lava getting interrupted on its flow. So instead of this beautiful sort of red stuff, there's little sort of rocky bits. Um, you can hear that. And it, you can't just sort of hear it. It literally sounds like sort of waves crashing on the sound. The whole reason we're going with this um, um, one-step ultra disc crazy vinyl, um, as again, there's clarity vinyl, super vinyl, whatever we're going to call it, um, compound i know they're different compounds but work with me here the enhanced vinyl stuff is that supposed to be as close to being dead silent, dead quiet as possible the quieter the surface material itself the more you're just getting the you know musical information rather than the the built-in nonsense of this analog medium that actually reproduces that stuff at the worst vinyl is kind of a pain in the ass um 
if I wanted perfect, pop-free, click-free, absolutely pristine stuff, I could listen to Super Audio CD, or if I just wanted super simplicity, I didn't even have to get it off my ass and just do Spotify. Um, absolutely. But one of the things that you run into, fortunately or unfortunately, with analog is this sort of stuff. Now, again, I am not picking on Mobile Fidelity here. Uh, they make some extraordinary stuff. I'm, I'm, I purchased this, I'm no show for them. Um, but I'm gonna call it out as I see it. What, what is a bit frustrating was sort of my experience in actually dealing with what do I do about getting replacements for this? This is sold out, sold out immediately. Um, I finally got my shipment. As I said, it cost me $100 to get this stuff um, when you take in a duty and, and customs and US exchange rate and stuff just to ship this in another record. Actually, both records had issues, but that's another conversation. Um, on disc two, not as much non-fill, but certainly much more surface noise than um, is satisfactory. And so I bought from Music Direct, which is the sister company, same owner as Mobile Fidelity. And um, uh, I was obviously concerned. I'm like, here's this sold out thing that super went quick. I've never had a problem with any of the one steps anywhere to, to this extent. This is not me, you know, finding a little thing. This is a major thing. It's, it's, you can photograph it and see this nonsense. And they didn't have any records um, to replacement. Now, it doesn't mean they're not getting them. Um, they will press more. I have no idea how it's going to actually work with one step. Like the whole point of this is that they're limiting the number of actual, you know, plates that they're doing. Are they going to do an entirely new plate just for those records that sort of go through the thing? Now, this isn't extremely obvious, but it's also not not obvious for it to get through QC. Um, certainly, you put it under a bright light, you see it immediately. So there's obviously with this incredible pressure to get this stuff out, this one was missed. Um, and visual inspection actually failed on this one. There's enough surface marks on this that it absolutely should have been red flagged in my opinion. Um, there, I'm having to buy from the States now as a Canadian because it does not show up in local retailers. As much as I would like to support local retailers, I can't uh, because this stuff will not get to me. And then I will have things that are double or triple the price for an album that I really want. And I really want this one. It's Paul Simon. Um, so when I called customer service, um, the first person was great. Um, she then put me through a supervisor who was, I got to say, not exactly um, the best foot forward from our friends at Music Direct. Immediately made it clear that their only option was to essentially maybe get me the new disc when they came in and reassured that their policy is for international orders. Normally what they would want me to do is to mail this back at my expense and then pay for the return at my expense. So I'd be paying sort of twice for something that clearly the expectation is for something of this caliber, this crazy, you know, box with all of this nonsense that I'm going to get the best of the best. It's obvious, like this exudes quality. And if there's a problem and it's a demonstrable problem, it's not me being nitpicky, like, oh, there's this little thing going on. This is like crazy. You, it's hard to hear the song because of the <laughs> that's actually going through with the um, uh, with the non-fill. Uh, I was sort of treated like I was a little bit of an inconvenience. I don't think that was necessary. I think it was probably a bad day. But nonetheless, uh, that was a little complicated. I actually then spoke to one of the vice presidents um, who, again, it just ex explained to me. I understand we have different policies. My thought was that he could assure that we there would be another pressing he um given this a sister company he can just verify that yeah we're pressing other versions of this this is roughly when it's probably going to come through he couldn't give me any of that fine um uh the only thing that i can do is uh to sort of save is to have these records sent out with my next order because of course i have many more things that are actually coming so when they show up hopefully i'll have new and better versions but of course my absolute concern is that because it's a one step i don't know that they will do more I have no guarantees that they're going to press more. The whole point of these is that it's incredibly limited. So again, are they just going to do a run for this? Do they already have plan to run? What's the past um, in terms of whether they do an allocation of X number to actually count for this sort of stuff? Um, it's not an easy thing um, to navigate. I get it. All the businesses need to make their money. And I think that a lot of people have probably... Um, uh, abuse the trust on that and sort of I get the hesitation but from my perspective if something that's 
terrible that's supposed to be excellent. And the process for fixing it, especially from somebody outside the country of the US, is really complicated. Um, they, f they made it sound like they're doing me a favor to actually allocate it with this other um, order as if I had, you know, um, uh, somehow participated in what, what the end quality was. Again, I'm not sure that was intentional. I, I, I don't, I think that was what it was. But nonetheless, I just want to let you guys know that if you get one of these records, I don't care who it's from, um, normally you'd bring it back to retail, but then your retail has to do the exact fight that I'm doing. I usually feel kind of bad about this. Um, but this is a real thing that can happen when pressing vinyl. It usually does not happen with the level of one step. It usually happens when you have um, certain companies just churning the stuff out. But the fact that this happened on the absolute premier, like top of the line record from Mobile Fidelity, and that it got through all the processes of checking, and that even when it's demonstrated and clear that this is the problem, that is not treated as, I don't mean, it's not gonna be an emergency, but at least it should be like, oh my God, no, we're standing by this product. This is a problem. We will make sure that you get a replacement as soon as possible, and we're gonna take care of this to keep you as a sort of long-standing customer who's bought tens of thousands of dollars with this stuff. I didn't really get that. And uh, maybe that's expectation management. Maybe that is what it is. But nonetheless, I am a little bit disappointed that this record that I've been waiting for for a long time that finally came that was promised to be in this sort of um, uh, uh, exquisite experience ended up being extremely disappointing. And I'm now very reticent to deal with a lot of these um, uh, records because I don't really want to go through this again. I don't want to have to spend, uh, you know, um, my time on the phone trying to fix something. Am I going to have to sort of, certainly I'm going to have to open the stuff up immediately. There's nothing that I can leave, um, uh, sort of <laughs> sealed and like wait to see what it's going. Cause the longer I wait, the less opportunity it will be. I don't mean in terms of keeping it sealed. So I'm eventually going to resell it. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying literally if I had waited a month just cause you know, I hadn't got around to listening to it or whatever my odds of getting a replacement are probably even less because more people in front of me would have got it and maybe they're only doing X number. I don't know. Maybe they're waiting to see how many people in the first month and then they press that many. I don't know. None of that, all of that is opaque, which is ironic given the vinyl, as we know, is translucent. See what I did there? So, non-fill is a thing. Um, again, you'll see um, the photo that I, I put up. I'll put it up again just to show. Here it is. This is what non-fill looks like. Um, I would love to play what it sounds like, um, but obviously for copyright reasons I can't. Uh, you can find that elsewhere. If you're interested, I can probably um, uh, put a link up to the file. Uh, leave me a note in the comments and I'll do that. Um, but yeah, uh, I gotta say, it's not my favorite thing to do as a follow-up um, to my uh, Paul Simon. I was obviously super excited about this. But just a heads up that when you get into this, this is the kind of nonsense you deal with. And I'm telling you, you just want no headaches, go digital. For love of God, go digital. This is why for years, anything I truly cared about, I just got on digital because I was just finding such a pain in the ass to get the right pressing, something that sounded good, something that wasn't a mess by the time you got it, that wasn't the, the shrink, the actual vinyl was crap. We are now getting something that is like really beautiful and substantial. We're still having problems. Now, it should be fixed. And absolutely, I'm gonna do a follow-up once I get the, um, the new version hopefully soon. Um, I believe I'll be taken care of. I'm not panicking yet. Um, that being said, I'm absolutely considering if, God forbid, one does show up locally, of buying that. Or as far as I can sell that one um, and and sort of figure out what to do with uh, um, while, while waiting for um, this replacement. I don't care about the number in the back. It's nice that it's limited edition. I guess that's one way to actually do it. I don't believe that number 6,000 was somehow pressed later than number 4,000. I don't think it works that way. I think that the box is just there and they're kind of just putting records and records. Um, but nonetheless, here we are, that we have a record with a bunch of non-fill and it's a little bit frustrating. Uh, for that shelf.com, I'm Jason Gorbert. Um, please uh, subscribe. Please follow us on social media. Please let us know in the comments if you've experienced this sort of thing yourself. Um, and let me know what your own experience has been with uh, whomever the company is. Again, this is not an attack on Mobile Fidelity um, at all. Uh, company I really respect and really love the stuff they're doing. I'm just a bit um, 
frustrated that it's it's a little bit more heavy lifting than I would expect for me to actually get a replacement for this. Um, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next video. All the best. Take care.